My name is Zubair Mampukas. I am Mauritian and I'm a faculty member in the Electrical Power Systems Engineering Program at the African Leadership College. So two years ago I was giving a guest lecture to some MBA students and this is where I met uh, this uh, guy named Terence and he had this uh, very passionate project about bee conservation on the continent and as we spoke more about it uh, we identified potential useful technology in there and that's where it immediately clicked that this was an ideal opportunity for my undergraduate students uh, back here in Mauritius. So after speaking to Terence, my primary objective was to work with my undergraduate students to build a prototype of a smart height monitor that would measure temperature, humidity, weight and sound levels and present that in real time on a mobile app to the beekeeper. First thing we did was we actually went to Black River, we met a beekeeper to understand what it is that they actually need. Um, and this is where we started picturing and understanding more about the inner workings of a hive and what kind of parameters uh, beekeepers would actually like to track. And based on this, these fundamental requirements, we go to the drawing board and we start tracking, okay, what sensors are gonna be able to do that? What processor are we gonna use? So we start basically from the outcome that we want and backtrack from there. So right after meeting the beekeeper in Black River, uh, we had one student who is very keen on coding, started working on a mobile phone application that would link to a cloud server. So that was a separate uh, part of the project that we then eventually linked together to have a fully functioning system. We had another student who just finished his first year and had done a course called engineering application. This is when they got introduced to the basic concepts of electronic sensors, soldering, etc. And he was extremely keen on uh, getting further experience on that. So he was ideal to be doing the hardware part of the project, which involved uh, identifying the correct sensors, uh, linking it up in an appropriate circuit and finally soldering it together. Oh, so is that what it looks like now? Yeah. And he was uploading? We have mastered meetings just to align on certain decisions because obviously decisions that one student makes in their particular town area can impact another student. So it's always important to have these regular meetings so we're all on the same page. So you take the form, you put it on there? I am basically the mentor for, for the students. Um, I have oversight of what has to be done and I try to uh, break down the tasks for them and allocate tasks to individual students based on their competence, based on their learning uh, objectives, based on what they are interested in. So we just finished our proof of concept, we call the V1 prototype. Two years ago is when we started the research around it to understand the problem and about a year ago is when we actually started work on designing and building the prototype. That goes to your GSM. So now when I hold the V1 prototype and see it working for the first time, it makes me feel very excited and also hopeful. Excited because it's a big milestone that we achieved. Hopeful in the sense of the impact that we wanted to have. What I'd really like is for you to get out of my hands and be in the hands of the beekeeper. Thanks so much. Now the end vision of this project is a future where we have tech enabled the beekeeping industry in Africa, help communities increase their honey yield and this is linked to SDG 15, which is life on Earth, especially how we know that bees are critical to pollination, which is the fundamental process for the food chain for life on the planet. So very often when people hear the word innovation, especially in the engineering space, they tend to think of state of the art, high tech, etc. I would say that innovation doesn't always have to be high tech. And in our case, actually, and quite the opposite, what we're trying to do here is minimal design. The fundamental goal is to have this spread and deployed across Africa. So we want to make it affordable for the African farmer. So what we're trying to do is, instead of over-engineering it, trying to look at off-the-shelf components and finding the right selection that can work together to have an affordable device. So that's where the innovation is for me personally. Yeah, then you put it wherever you think is necessary. As an educator, however, I see different kind of innovation also applicable to this project, which is the way in which we are teaching the students. The students who work on this project work on it not just for the technical experience, but because they were passionate about the outcome of it, they were passionate about conservation. And you must understand when, where is that first time? I was always interested in uh, 
um, combining agriculture and technology, especially in the context of Africa. Agriculture is one of the industries or sectors in each country that affects the most people. So the opportunities of integrating technology with agriculture is an increase, a dramatic increase in the economies of many African countries and of course the increase in quality of life of citizens. I specifically was working with the hardware team. It was very unlike the classroom, um, just because you definitely, there weren't any final answers to check and there wasn't someone who had all the answers for you to ask. And that is something that um, I guess a lot of students find uncomfortable, which I found uncomfortable. It was super frustrating. I go in there, I've got, I've got something I want to do, and it's just roadblock after roadblock after roadblock, and you sit there for hours solving one problem, you finally hit it and it's the best feeling ever. Because, I mean, it's just this thing that you've been trying to do for so long. You finally get this eureka moment. It, it was amazing. It's actually one of the, the times I actually got to concentrate on how I'm learning how to learn. And right here, um, you see that, okay. At the African Leadership College, you have this thing called mission and not majors, where you just choose what you want to do or the challenge you want to focus on and just, you know, get the necessary resources. Sort of like you curate your own major. It's very futuristic. And I think in the long term, all universities will adopt it. They will say, we're not doing majors, we're preparing students for missions. We're preparing students to have a, a problem-solving minds and to be ready for the real-world problems.